Well, hello. Thank you for joining us today. On behalf of the Greater Boston Chamber of Commerce, I would like to welcome the Women's Leadership Program Class of 2024 and their support system, nominators, managers, sponsors, and loved ones to today's graduation ceremony. My name is Erin wetterbrook Yaskaitis, and I am the Director of Learning and Development for the Chamber. I am so excited and proud to be here celebrating and honoring all of you today after our WLP journey together. Please note that this virtual graduation ceremony is being recorded and will be posted on YouTube. We will also use the spotlight feature today to highlight our incredible speakers. If you would like to see just the speakers, select speaker view in your Zoom controls. And if you would like to see everyone in the group, select gallery view in the controls. The mission of the Women's Leadership Program is to empower women leaders with the skills and network they need to excel in their careers and to create conditions for other women to thrive. In partnership with Simmons University Institute for Inclusive Leadership, the Chamber Women's Network Advisory Board, and a growing alumni network of over 1,200 women, we aim to close the gender gap in leadership roles in every industry. Graduates, for the past 10 months, you have studied leadership styles, intentional networking, team and perception management, inclusive leadership, and negotiations. You developed lifelong connections with members of this cohort and the other cohort as well, both cohorts coming together. These will last for the rest of your career. You completed a hands-on project that we just reviewed in our previous session. You made positive change at your companies through the individual action projects, and you juggled personal and professional commitments through this entire program. What an impressive accomplishment. I hope that you will take all that you learned, experienced, and overcame back with you to make your organizations even more equitable and inclusive places to work. With the new tools in your kit, you have the ability to build the kind of future you want and the kind of future we need to achieve gender equity in the workplace. I realize you could not have done all of this alone, so I wanna extend a heartfelt thank you and congratulations to those who supported you to participate in this program, your managers, your colleagues, and your loved ones. The success of this cohort would not be possible without those of you who took on the extra project or the extra childcare duties to allow the participants to attend the sessions. Thank you for lending a hand, lending an ear, or lending your expertise. I would also like to thank Holland and Knight, our program sponsor, as well as Simmons Institute for Inclusive Leadership, our exclusive academic partner. Without both of these organizations, WLP would not have been possible. We will now hear from our class speakers nominated by you who represent both cohorts. Colin, over to you. Thank you, Erin. And special thanks again to Holland and I for serving as this year's WLP sponsor. Now I'm thrilled to introduce our first class speaker from our virtual cohort, Katya Sharikova. Katya is a tactful and driven professional experienced in drug discovery operations and project management. Katya's goal for operational excellence is to maximize performance of R&D sites and create fit for purpose operational models impactful under flexing, flexing circumstances. Her approach to R&D operations enhances innovation by understanding, evolving needs, encouraging, collaborating mindset, and leading continuous improvement. In her current role as, a, as head of strategy and operations, Katia has co-chaired Basis of Design Working Committee for BMS Cambridge Crossing R&D flagship site, representing business units for all lab and office design requirements. She co-led COVID-19 return to work pandemic planning activities for a faculty of 300 people. In the past, Katya oversaw the deployment of technology platforms to facilitate track R&D operations, inclusive of vendor engagement, and through due diligence of vendor capabilities in relation to internal needs. She developed and maintained tools and processes to ensure updated and accurate tracking of external resources from CRO networks for the early R&D portfolio. Katya holds her MS in Regulatory Affairs and Bachelor's Degree in Chemistry from San Diego State University. When she is not influencing impactful decision making, she is an avid yoga practitioner and a busy mom of a four year old terror. Her words, not mine. Now to pass it on over to Katya. Thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? 
Fabulous. So again, thank you so much for a warm welcome. I Now that I'm hearing, I definitely need to rewrite my short bio and so grateful for opportunity to speak before you today. Uh, I must confess, uh, public speaking to me is a little bit like parallel parking when somebody's watching you. So I appreciate everyone's patience as I glance over my notes. Um, when Aaron's email arrived last Wednesday regarding my nomination to be as a class speaker, it couldn't have come at a busiest time. I, I was in the midst of transition plans with my manager, grappling with the recent layoffs, and the school just called me and told me that my child has thrown up. So quite the trifecta. At the same time, this provided uh, a perfect introduction to talk about relatable leadership and how women's leadership program has helped equip us to step into our leadership roles. I'm gonna date myself a little bit here and just taking a step back. Do you remember uh, Andre Agassi's and famous commercial slogan, image is everything? For years, leaders across industries have embraced the idea of strength, resilience, projective flawlessness. However, recent thought, including research from Harvard Business School, suggests that effective leadership is not about perfection. It's about ethnicity. With this view, relatable leadership encompasses understanding, empathy, and connection. When peers, direct reports, colleagues see us leading authentically, we all perform better, trust the process, and more importantly, we make better decisions. I mean, this is all great and good, Katya, you might think, but how do we actually change the mindset of thinking images everything? Well, and how do we you know, change our mindset to lead with more confidence? So let us reflect on some of the awesome exercises and discussions in the 10 months that we have all been together. Remember the session on managing perceptions? It was like discovering the secret sauce to effective communication, understanding our HRDQ assessment and tailoring to the discussion at hand was truly enlightening. But wait, there is more. All those role playing scenarios, I mean, when you hard drop just a little bit because you don't know who you're gonna be paired up in the break room and are they gonna like me? Do I really need to speak right now? Although highly anxiety inducing, those exercises were crucial for growth. Creating a supportive space with fellow women leaders are, who are there for you and with you is essential to striving forward the type of leaders we inspire to be. But as we conclude our program, learning to continue that support on our own is crucial. I encourage you all to think of the type of leader you'd like to be, capture why and claim it, claim that outcome. Journal it, put it on the outlook, leave post-it notes, whatever makes sense to you to keep that focus in front of you and never forget the lessons that you learned in the last 10 months. Now, I want to talk a little bit about my favorite exercise in WLP, uh, our plane crash exercise. Just so you folks know, I now know who I like to have on my side when the zombies attack. But seriously, the exercise highlighted the importance of teamwork in a very tangible way to me. How many times have you been in a meeting and you thought to yourself, this could have been an email? Do I really need to give feedback? Does anybody really care? Um, or even, you know what, I actually can do this better on my own. But in real life, we do not always have the opportunity to hit pause and think about a task or a project or a conflict in front of you. But WLP has really provided a framework and a toolkit for us to think about these things on the fly, invaluable in real life situation. I'd like to take a moment to recognize something that this program was unable to uh, was able to create, a gift, really. WLP has created an incredible sense of trust in our cohorts. And this is the greatest form of capital any leader has today. Trust, belief in someone's abilities, integrity, character, usually is based to build personal relationships. While it may be more often thought about friendships and personal relations, uh, Harvard Business Review also mentions that high trusting organizations are extremely successful. In high trust organizations, employees feel safer, uh, encouraged, they're able to take risks, they express themselves freely, and that all leads to better decisions and better communication as a whole. So as an example, the sessions on candid and challenging conversations were extremely powerful to me. How many of you were able to ask those questions? How many of you were able to share those experiences because you trust the women who were there online with you? For myself, 
I can say that the sense of belonging and trust made my personal growth that much easier. For that, I thank you all. Absolutely thank you all in this program. In fact, I believe all of us, incredible women, will go forward and lead with grace and poise through any challenges. I would like to wrap up with a final thought to tie this all together. Relatable relationship, again, is effective because through authenticity, and I hate that word because I've been struggling with it my entire speech, we can build trust, encourage opening communications, and create a positive work culture, which are key things highlighted in this program. We can relate to each other and we can build on each other's strength. So the final thought I'm going to borrow from Namaste, you know, the light in me recognizes the light in you. Each and every one of you has an ally in me. I want to thank Colin and Aaron for all of their amazing contribution and our incredible speakers. And um, maybe don't hold yourself to perfection and consider the value of relatable, uh, relatable leadership. Thank you so much. And with that, I'll give it to Aaron. Thank you, Katya. That was such an inspirational speech. Um, I feel hopeful for the years ahead um, when we have leaders and managers like you in place. And I was really struck by the phrase relatable leadership. I think that's something that we can all take with us. Um, and I also like that you talked about adaptability. That is a word that we didn't tap into quite as much in our reflections, but it's definitely one that came out of all of the different sessions that we had with our Simmons faculty. Class of 2024, we have been on quite a journey. Let's revisit the program experience. Um, you remember this because it just happened, but for those tuning in who are your supporters and your loved ones, um, let's help them trace the steps that you took on your WLP journey. During orientation, we shared personal stories through the artifact exercise. Though many of us were nervous to speak, it was a meaningful way to highlight the expertise experience and power in this cohort. Our team knew from the first day that this cohort, um, both virtual and in-person, is made up of a remarkable group of leaders. We spent time in the virtual and in-person classrooms of Simmons University Institute for Inclusive Leadership, hearing from their fantastic faculty. There, we built a robust leadership toolkit. One, you identified your default leadership style through the HRDQ assessment, this is something we have talked about throughout the entire program. Two, you learned how to manage dynamics at work inclusively. Three, you practice navigating gendered expectations in the workplace. Four, you learned about intentional networking and then put those skills into practice through candid conversations with WLP alumni and members of the Women's Network Advisory Board. Five, you explored how to command a room with your voice and body language um, through the public speaking workshop with Amanda Hennessy. And finally, you gain skills for empowering yourself as effective self-advocates. All the while, you built a, a network with this class and both cohorts that we hope will last long after the program ends. You had quite the ride in 10 months. I don't even know how to encapsulate that in any word other than wow. Throughout the program, you all showed us, Colin and I, time and time again, that you are the leaders that will not only get a seat at the table, but bring a chair for another woman to join you in the process. I am now excited to introduce our, our next class speaker from our in-person cohort. Maitza Ver Crocker is the global head of client centricity in the client experience department at State Street Corporation. Prior to this role, she was a global relationship manager in network management. She was previously in the global relationship management department and had responsibility for global client strategy and alignment, thought leadership and product delivery oversight spanning multiple business lines and geographic locations for several clients. She formerly created and headed the client services team in the network management and correspondent banking department. Prior to that, she spent 18 years specializing in frontier and emerging markets, encouraging the development of transparency, efficiency, and safety in local securities markets. She is also a champion for diversity and inclusion and currently serves as an advisor to the Black Professionals Group and is actively engaged in the 10 Actions Against Racism and Inequality Initiative at State Street. She is a member of the Board of Trustees of St. John Paul II Catholic Academy, 
She also serves on the Executive Committee on the Board of Horizons for Homeless Children and is the co-chair of the Diversity Committee. Maita holds a BS in International Business from Framingham State University, an MS in Multinational Commerce from Boston University, an Executive Leadership Program Certificate from the Partnership Incorporated, and a Diversity and Inclusion for HR Certificate from Cornell University. Welcome, and Maita, over to you. Thank you so much, Erin. Many of you know that I was born and raised on the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. So as an immigrant, I have been through many firsts. What I never envisage, however, is that I would one day be nominated by my peers to speak at this graduation. I am so deeply grateful and truly humbled for this opportunity. I also would like to thank State Street CEO and several female executives, including Yvonne Garcia, who recently re received a Pinnacle Award, who's actually on this call, whom I greatly admire for nominating me for this program. I have greatly enjoyed this unique opportunity to spend months with a group of remarkable women leaders. And today, as we celebrate the culmination of this program, I am deeply honored to represent this distinguished assembly of empowered and inspiring women. So on behalf of this cohort, I would like to thank everyone who played a role in providing us with an exceptional program. For those of us who are in person, we are grateful to Colin for his culinary selections, which wowed all of us by offering a delightful array of diverse and exquisite cuisines. Having spent many years in Africa, as Erin read in my bio, there's a story that has always resonated with me. And it's about an anthropologist who proposed a game to a number of kids in a tribal village. And what he did was he placed a basket of fruits at the bottom of a tree. And he had all of them stand about 100 meters away. And then he announced that whoever reaches first would get all the fruits in the basket. So then he said, ready, steady, go. And he waited. But he watched in amazement as they all caught each other's arms and they ran together towards the tree. And they divided the fruits among them and they ate it all together and enjoyed it. And when the anthropologist asked them, why did you do that? They said, Ubuntu, which meant, how can one be happy when all others are sad? You see, Ubuntu in their language means, I am because we are. In a way, I feel that we practiced Ubuntu in the last 10 months. We all shared our personal stories, challenges, and triumphs. And we richly benefited by creating a safe space where we all could learn from each other. And today marks a pivotal moment in our journey where we explored the myriad styles and nuances of leadership and revealed a powerful link between self-awareness and impactful leadership. This insight will serve us as a guiding light, empowering us to navigate through challenging situations and team dynamics with confidence and grace. As we collaborated, learn to name, explain, and claim, and we engaged in healthy competition. A few of us even acted and were re rewarded with swag. Some of the highlights though, were definitely the candid conversations where we shared wisdom or bonded over libations during the networking sessions. We have honed our skills, expanded our networks, forged lifetime friendships, and gained a deeper understanding of our unique capabilities as leaders. 
We garnered valuable perspectives on the importance of leading with authenticity, flexibility, inclusivity, and empathy. So as you heard in my bio, I am deeply committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And frankly, seeing this diverse cohort being intentionally created was truly uplifting. And during our time together, we brought unique experiences, knowledge, and approaches to the table. And we ensured that all voices were heard and valued. But as leaders, we know that we are enriched immeasurably by the kaleidoscope of voices and talents that comprise our teams. And as we embrace the diverse perspectives and experiences, we will certainly unlock a wealth of creativity, innovation, and insight. I, for one, strongly believe in lifting as I climb, and I make it a point to mentor many women. And as I know, based on talking to all of you, that many of you also do. So as we bring our lessons learned to our companies, let us continue to be beacons of change, catalysts for equality, and champions for diversity, equity, and inclusion, and foster inclusive environments where everyone has the opportunity to thrive. And finally, I'd like to share my favorite quote by Maya Angelou. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. This sentiment resonates deeply with me, reminding us all of the power of human connection and the lasting impact of our actions on those around us. So let us remember that true leadership is not about the titles that we hold or the positions we occupy, but about the lives that we touch, the values that we uphold and the legacies that we leave behind. As we embark on the journey ahead, may we continue to break barriers, uplift each other, amplify our voices, and redefine what it means to be powerful women. Together, let us carve a path towards a future where women's leadership is not just celebrated, but integral to our collective success. May your paths be filled with light, continuous learning, success, fulfillment, and purpose. Congratulations to each of you. Thank you. And now I'll pass it over to Erin. Thank you so much, Maitha. What struck me about your speech was the line when you translated Umbutu, I am because we are. That is going to be something that sticks with me for a long time. And I think that encapsulates our cohorts for WLP as well. Um, we had a very tight knit group, as I said at the beginning, and we were just so um, proud and impressed to see the connections and the relationships building um, through each session. So thank you for putting beautiful words um, to what we saw unfolding. I also love how you touched on the self-awareness and insight amongst all the other incredible messages in your speech. Now for our keynote speaker, as a child of the military myself, it's my absolute honor to introduce Lieutenant Colonel Dion Tanise Monroe, commander of the New England Recruiting Battalion of the United States Army. She is directly involved in conducting recruitment operations to enlist the highest qualified men and women into the active army and the U.S. Army Reserve in order to sustain a professional all-volunteer force, ensuring the security and readiness of our nation. Her previous assignments include Deputy Division Chief of Operations for U.S. Central Command's J-6. U.S. CENTCOM's area of responsibility spans more than 4 million square miles, intersects three continents, and 21 nations, which stretches from Northeast Africa across the Middle East to Central and South Asia. Lieutenant Colonel Monroe received her B.S. in Computer Science from Columbus State University and a Master's in Business Administration from Webster University. Upon enlisting in the Army, she attended basic training at Fort Jackson and was commissioned through the Army's Officer Candidate School at Fort Benning in Georgia. 
She has been awarded countless individual and unit awards to include the Defense Meritorious Service Medal and the Humanitarian Service Medal for her contributions to the Afghanistan retrograde in support of Operation Allies Welcome. Please join me in welcoming Lieutenant Colonel Monroe as our keynote speaker. Dion, over to you. Thank you, Erin. That was a great introduction and uh, good afternoon, ladies. I am completely honored to be here today, um, especially at this time in the program, which is the culmination of the hard work and growth that has gone into just being a part of the Women's Leadership Program. Um, I will say that I am a huge proponent for women in leadership positions. Uh, just to give you some stats for the Army, so Recruiting Command covers the entire U.S. Um, and every U.S. territory to include all the federal bases around the world. Um, like Germany, her, um, Japan, and Korea. But uh, the Army recruits in all these places. And so there's a total of 38 uh, recruiting battalions. However, there are only four female commanders, uh, with myself included. And so we currently make up about 10% of leadership and recruiting, uh, with women as a whole only making up about 17% of the Army. Uh, we have the second lowest percentages of all other services, uh, with the Marine Corps being the only service that has a lower percentage. And uh, that is by no means a bragging point, but I say that because I think that when you're in a male-dominated profession, which many of us are, uh, it's even more important for females that are in leadership positions to actually be good leaders. And I'm going to give the disclaimer now because I've been in the Army for 19 years now, and so all I know is what my experience has been in this profession. And so a lot of the things that I'm about to say today are very army specific, but uh, I do think that my experience as a female in leadership will probably translate well within any profession. And so uh, before I go into any examples, I just wanna talk a little bit about the program that you've been in. Uh, this program is kind of giving you the opportunity to focus on developing a skill set that will not only help you grow, but will push you to step outside of your comfort zone and just further uh, prepare you to reach your career goals. The expectation is for you to now continue on that career path because each of you have been chosen, uh, chosen because your organization's leadership saw something in you and you've already made an invest, they've already made an investment in your future uh, for you to even be here. I think that throughout my career, there have been many people who saw something in me uh, before I saw it in myself. Uh, they've helped me to grow in ways that I hadn't imagined or thought possible. And because I've been fortunate enough to have that in my career, uh, I try to make it a point to ensure that I'm doing the same thing to, to younger women that I see coming up. Um, I think that for me that the Army has kind of provided a sense of purpose uh, and from the very start has just supported my growth. And I think that this is important because every organization uh, is not going to value what you bring to the table. Um, my best friend right now is at a job that she completely hates. And I'm telling her daily, I'm just like, girl, you need to go somewhere else where they value you as an individual. Um, and every single time I say it, I, I completely understand that this is by far easier said than done but I wholeheartedly believe that programs like the one you just completed allows us to, number one, know our worth, and number two, provide the confidence that you may need to step out on a ledge, even if that's just applying for a different position uh, in the organization to kind of elevate you to a higher level. Um, I think that being in the Army has offered me just unlimited uh, possibilities to just discover my passions, to find my purpose, and also just build a lifelong community. I think that has honestly allowed me to be the best version of myself. Um, and that's what I think that we should all be looking for in whatever career paths that we take. You've all been pushed within this program to uh, step outside your comfort zone. And so, like I, like I said earlier, um, I'm in a highly male dominated profession but uh, I have been able to excel as a female leader. And uh, I think that it's important to not lose sight of the fact that women tend to be underestimated um, more than men in the workplace. And I believe that the majority of organizations are definitely moving in the right direction over the years to ensure that this is not the case, but I don't believe that we're there yet. Uh, 
which makes what you do at your level so crucial in your organization. At my level, I'm very aware that the Army has placed enough confidence and faith in me that I'm in charge of the most strategic focal point in the Department of Defense right now. And just to be the person responsible for all Army recruiting efforts across New England um, at a time when the nation is having a, a recruiting crisis weighs heavily on me. Uh, I understand the magnitude of my actions uh, daily because at the end of the day, if I fail, and not only me, but all of my peers across the U.S., if we fail and a conflict occurs, then this will be the first time that a draft has been reinstated since 1973. And I definitely do not want that happening on my watch. And I tell you this because in whatever position that you're in, you have to find in it what resonates in you to be the best that you could be. I know that I don't want, <clears throat> I know that I don't want my nieces and nephews coming down the line being drafted because of what I felt to do here and now. And so that resonates with me and makes me want to do better in the position that I'm in. Um, I already know that you all are self-motivated and highly performing, which is why you're here. Um, another thing that I wanted to say uh, and I'm pivoting a little bit, but as women, I think that uh, we can either pull others up with us or we can put up walls. And I would urge you to not tailor your personality to become hard because that's what you think leadership calls for. Uh, combat that perception and strive to lift others up. It's definitely going to be hard because you might be in a daily fight just to survive on your own at any given day. But uh, uplifting women is something that you're going to have to go out of your way to do. And by no means am I saying to favor other women just because they're women. Uh, but I am saying that you should actively help women to thrive that are maintaining the standard and doing the right thing to get to the next level. Um, because the higher up you go, the more political it becomes. And trying to navigate when there's no roadmap just becomes challenging. And so I implore you to be that roadmap for others to follow um, without changing who you are, because what got you in this position will ultimately keep you there. Your own leadership journey is going to be as individual as you are. And so it's important to determine what your leadership style is and how you want it to become because um, it's okay if you're not there and you're not where you wanna be at right now. Throughout my career, I have observed uh, leaders around me and I've taken these styles to create what works, what works best for me, um, to be the best leader that I wanna be. And so there wasn't really a blueprint to teach me, I just had to create it myself. Uh, yes, there were, I've read books, looked at TED Talks, um, I used um, people that I met in real life and influencers that I followed on social media and things like that. But I would just say that um, take all of these resources and um, basically just glean what, whatever nuggets of wisdom that resonate with you specifically um, and use that to create your, uh, to create your own style. Um, but aside from all of that, it's the foundation of your personal experiences that that I think are gonna to come together to define the style of leader that you choose to be. And I would say that the best thing about it is that you get to decide. You should always continue to develop and refine your leadership and communication style just based on your experiences and observations of those around you. Um, take the best lessons learned from each of the leaders that you engage with, as well as your mentors to determine what works best for you. And it may not feel natural or comfortable at first, but you have to give yourself a little bit of grace as you're going through this process to grow into your leadership role. Um, I will say that um, <clears throat> finding my own leadership role has, has been challenging and it's always changing depending on uh, whatever position that I'm in throughout my career. Um, I would say that my own style is stern, but fair. I'm a very transparent person um, I would not consider myself confrontational. However, I, I have no issue telling a subordinate when they're not hitting the mark on an expectation. Uh, however, on the other hand, I make it very clear what my expectations are. Um, I would say that one thing that I had to 
adjust to uh, with, with being in a commander role is just making a conscious effort to take an unbiased approach to any situation while I'm maintaining a standard, um, while preserving that level of empathy, uh, to be aware of what someone's going through without swaying to the extreme of one side or the other. Uh, because every single day you may encounter a situation that you've never dealt with before. And the good thing is that you've been empowered through this program and equipped with a leadership toolkit. And so now you all are connected to members of this extended network navigating the workplace. Um, in addition to, while you should be connecting with everyone that you meet up and down the ladder, uh, imparting and taking what you need for your leadership style. Definitely eliminate the negative self-talk uh, to do intentional networking, uh, because I'm sure, as they've stated numerous times, collaboration is important. And so after going through this program, you should all be looking toward the next career goal. So where will you go from here? Take the lessons and the skills that you've acquired back to your organization, back to, the, back to those you supervise and back to the teams that you're a part of. Uh, take tasks on that come and approach each one with the same passion to expand your skills and your abilities. Um, because every new engagement is just an opportunity to put what you've learned here in the play. I would say don't sit back waiting for the opportunities to come to you. Uh, you need to determine what your goals are and actively go after them. And then look and re look for and recognize those, uh, those people that have the same drive and the determination that got you to where you are and bring them with you. And so everything that I'm saying right now is just kind of a, uh, hyping y'all up because you already have what you need to be successful. Uh, there are just times that you go throughout your career where you may need a bit of inspiration uh, as well. And so be the person who inspires others, uh, who sees their potential, uh, the one who advocates for yourself and others, and don't just be in the room. Um, make sure that you have a seat at the table. And so I'd like for everyone to just take a moment right now and say thank you. Thank you to your younger self who listened to the mentors who believed in you even before you did. Your younger self who raised your hand and said, yeah, let me try this. Or who nodded your head and say, yeah, I can do that. Uh, who knows deep down that you've done the work to be here and that you're ready for more. You're ready to continue this journey to learn to network and to continue to grow in the leadership development because you now have the skills, you have the experience, and you have the connections of everyone you've met within this group. What do you do with all that you've learned here is up to you. And so I would ask, where do you want to be at this time next year? Um, like I said before, I've been in the military for 19 years and it has absolutely flown by. Um, as I decide whether or not to retire or stay in and aspire for uh, higher senior positions. I know that there are so many opportunities available that I'm looking forward to. Uh, my ultimate goal is to be involved in humanitarian work. And so it's like in being in the military, I don't know where how I'm gonna get there yet, but I do know that I'll work towards making the decisions to get me there as I move forward. And I know that I possess every skill and capability in order to achieve all these goals. And so my question to you is, what feels true to you? Um, it may not be comfortable, but it's truest to, you, to who you are, and that is what you should follow. Getting over your self-doubts is the biggest hurdle in any accomplishment. And we put so much self-doubt into creating limitations that we tend to talk ourselves into thinking that you can't succeed. But you guys are here. You can, and you will, and you already have. And so before I close, I just want to leave you with some parting words of uh, please do a self-assessment of where you are today. Um, acknowledge what no longer serves you and where you need to grow. And finally, be relevant and value added when you're in the room. Put in the work and be ready to seize every opportunity that comes your way. And so, ladies, congratulations on your hard work and efforts. Now, take a deep breath, buckle in, and get ready to do great and amazing things.
Thank you. And uh, Colin, back to you. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Monroe, for your fantastic keynote speech. I really love the part when you said, be that roadmap to others without changing who you are. Um, we appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to provide such inspirational words to our graduating class. I am now delighted to introduce a surprise to our graduates. The Chamber's content creator, Abigail Amatucci, has attended some of our in-person sessions, shot some B-roll footage, and created a beautiful graduation video for all of you. In this video, we'll also see all the graduates' names on the screen. During that part, I encourage all of you to write words of encouragement in the chat. Participants share your thoughts about the video and managers and support people. This is your chance to share words of congrats and support for your participants. And now our class of 2024 graduation video. Congratulations WLP Class of 2024. As alumni ourselves and Chamber staff members, we're so excited to welcome you into the alumni community. We are all connected as WLP alumni. We look forward to working with you as we continue to elevate women to the highest positions across all industries. Congratulations! As your membership team, we are here as a resource for you to stay involved with the Chamber and all of our various offerings. And stay engaged with us by joining us at our events and forums. Thank you for being a part of our diverse and collaborative membership community. Congratulations, everyone. And as Chamber staff, we want to ensure you stay involved with our many offerings even after this program ends. And to tell us more about how the Chamber can serve as a resource to you, please welcome Erica Smith, our Senior Director of Member Services. Thanks, Colin. First, let me say congratulations to the Women's Leadership Program Class of 2024. Uh, so my name is Erica Smith. I'm the Senior Director of Member Services here at the Chamber, and I'm happy to report that all of your organizations are each members of the Chamber, and we hope you continue to stay engaged and get others from your teams engaged as well. I'm also an alumni of the Women's Leadership Program and couldn't be happier to have the opportunity to say hello to each of you this afternoon. So as you think about your career paths, I, um, the Chamber can continue to be a resource to you. Our mission at the Greater Boston Chamber of Commerce is to make Greater Boston the best place for all businesses and all people to thrive. And we work towards this mission through a number of initiatives. 
First, we offer standalone events each year that range from the women's network forums you experience during the program to government affairs forums with local elected leaders to our special events like our Pinnacle Awards and our recent annual meeting to our City Awake events catering to young professionals and finally our BEMA events for our marketing and digital media professionals. We also research, develop and advocate for public policies that contribute to the economic success of our region. And under Aaron and Colin's leadership, we offer a portfolio of leadership development programs to give participants like you the skills and the networks that they need for their careers. You've already experienced our women's leadership program, but we also offer Boston Future Leaders for emerging leaders, as well as our diversity, equity, and inclusion certificate, a three-week virtual certificate series, and our How to Be an LGBTQIA Plus Ally in the Workplace, which I'm happy to report registration is currently open for. Finally, we have an economic opportunity arm that ensures all of the work we are doing benefits everybody. This arm has a specific focus on racial equity, includes our Paysetters Network, where we are developing an ecosystem of corporations and partners with the influence and buying power to transform, corp or transform systemic opportunity for minority business enterprises. We also have our Massachusetts Apprentice Network building on the Commonwealth's effort to expand apprenticeship models beyond the building trades. So the best way um, to ensure that you are staying engaged and hearing about our programs and events and initiatives is to make sure that you're signed up for our newsletter and to connect with your member services representative, which I'm happy to report is either myself or your uh, WLP alumni graduate, Vanessa Archangelo. So I hope to see you all at a chamber event soon. I'm very friendly. Come over and say hi to me. And once again, congratulations. And I hope you all enjoy celebrating your success. Thank you. Thank you so much, Erica. I really appreciate your input. Wow. Okay. Although the Women's Leadership Program closes today, I hope your commitment to supporting one another, to advocating for yourself, and to creating the conditions for other women to thrive continues with gusto. Thank you to our sponsor, Holland and Knight. Thank you to all of the supporters. I have loved seeing your encouraging uh, comments in the chat for your participants. Thank you to the Chamber team for making this program a reality. Thank you to our phenomenal speakers today, Lieutenant Colonel Monroe, Katya, and Maita, our class speakers, and thank you to everyone tuning in for your dedication to gender equity in the workplace. Now, before we close, I would like to take one moment to give a special shout out to Colin Wilson, our learning and development program manager, who is getting married on Friday. And as the favorite staff member of our WLP class, we would like to take a moment to congratulate you and wish you all of our best um, for your wedding and your mini moon coming up. So everyone feel free to unmute. We're gonna cheer for Colin. We're gonna cheer for each other and just make a lot of noise. Congratulations. 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 All the best. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> of course, Aaron didn't tell me that that was happening because I wouldn't nope. I wouldn't have allowed it. Thank I you. know. <laughs> uh, thank you to all of the um, WLP participants for being my co-conspirators in that moment. Um, you all may not know, but Colin and I both just recently in the spring celebrated our second anniversaries with the chamber. Um, it has been such a joy for us to be on this WLP journey with you this year. And I just want to extend a one more heartfelt congratulations to the class of 2024. You did it. We need leaders like you with the perspective tools and connections to survive, thrive, and conquer the unexpected. We can't wait to see what you do next. The chamber will support you every step of the way. Our graduation ceremony is concluded. Have a fantastic night.